السلام علیکم ایوری ون ہوپ یو آل آر ڈوئنگ گڈ یو آر سیف یو آر فائن آج ہم لیکچر نمبر ٹو گیسٹرو انٹسٹائنل فیزیالوجی کو ڈسکس کریں گے جس کے اندر ہم نے گیسٹرو انٹسٹائنل ٹریکٹ کی جو وال ہے اس کے اندر جو ڈفرینٹ اسٹرکچرز ہیں اسٹالوجیکل اسٹرکچرز ہیں ان کو ڈسکس کرنا ہے ان کی امپلیکیشنز دیکھنی ہے اور ساتھ میں جو سب سے امپورٹنٹ ہے فرام ایگزامنیشن پوائنٹ آف ویو انٹیرک نروس سسٹم اس کو ڈسکس کرنا ہے اس سیشن کے اس پرٹیکولر لیکچر کے جو انٹینڈیڈ لرننگ آؤٹ کمز ہیں وہ یہ ہیں کہ بائی دی اینڈ آف دس لیکچر یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو ڈسکرائب دی لیئرز آف انٹسٹائنل وال دی پلیکسز اینڈ اورینٹیشن آف اسموتھ مسلس ود ان دی انٹسٹائنل وال اینڈ یو شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو ڈسکرائب دی نیورل ریگولیشن آف انٹسٹائن اگر ہم کچھ کوشچنز میں دیکھوں کچھ اسسمنٹ کوشچنز رکھوں تو اس سیشن میں سے جو کوشچن بن سکتے ہیں وہ ہیں نیم دی لیئرز آف دی انٹسٹائنل وال ان دیئر آرڈر آف اپیرنس فرام لیومن ٹو سیروزا وٹ ٹو پلیکسز ہیو گینگلیا لوکیٹڈ ان دی انٹسٹائنل وال وٹ از دی اورینٹیشن آف دا ٹو اسموتھ مسلس لیئر دیٹ آر پریزنٹ ان دی انٹسٹائنل وال ڈسکرائب دی لوکیشن آف میز انٹیرک اینڈ مائی انٹیرک پلیکسز وٹ کائنڈ آف نیورو ٹرانسمیٹرس could be involved in enteric nervous system uh, describe how stretch of a segment of intestine can result in localized segmental contraction without any input from nerves outside the intestine to agar aap apni learning is in is assessment ke get build karne ki koshish karenge to ye lecture jo hai hamare liye samajhna zyada aasan ho jayega zyada behtar ho jayega so if we look at the different layers of intestinal wall in a three dimensional cross section uh, we will come to know that the innermost layer that is towards the lumen is the epithelium uh, this epithelium rests on a layer of connective tissue called as lamina propria iske baad hamare paas muscularis mucosae hai which is a muscular layer that is attached to the mucosa of the intestine then we have the submucosa layer uh, in this submucosa is present a plexus which is called as submucosal plexus or the meesner's plexus iska dusra naam meesner's plexus hai aur ye alternatively use hote hain to ye important cheez hai yahan pe isko yaad rakhna ke baaz auqat it is asked as submucosal plexus and sometimes it is asked as uh, meesner's plexus اس کے بعد ہمارے پاس انر موسٹ لیئر آف مسل ہے جس کو ہم انر سرکولر لیئر بھی کہتے ہیں اور اس کے بعد جو آؤٹر موسٹ لیئر ہے دیٹ از لانگیچوڈنل مسل لیئر اور اس کے درمیان میں ہمارے پاس ایک اور پلیکسز ہے جس کو مائن ٹیرک پلیکسز کہتے ہیں یعنی یہ دو دو مسکولر لیئر ہیں آؤٹر موسٹ از لانگیچوڈنل اینڈ انر موسٹ از سرکولر اور ان کے درمیان میں ایک اور پلیکسز نرو پلیکسز ایگزٹ کرتی ہے جس کو مائی انٹیرک پلیکسز کہتے ہیں اور اس کے بعد ہمارے پاس آؤٹر موسٹ لیئر ہے سیروزل لیئر تو یہ ایک بریف اوور ویو ہے اس کو ہم ابھی آگے ڈیٹیل کے اندر ڈسکس کرتے ہیں انٹسٹائنل سیگمنٹ کے اندر جو ڈفرینٹ لیئرز ہیں ان کو بار بار ڈسکس کریں گے اور یہ دو امپورٹنٹ چیزیں ہیں جو کہ آپ نے یاد رکھنی ہے سب میکوزل پلیکسز اس کو میزنرس پلیکسز بھی کہتے ہیں اور مائی انٹیرک پلیکسز اس کو اور بیکس پلیکسز بھی کہتے ہیں یہ جنرلی کانسٹیٹیوٹ کرتی ہیں جو کہ ہم آگے ڈسکس کریں گے لیٹر آن ایز انٹیرک نروس سسٹم دس از انادر کراس سیکشنل ویو آف دی انٹسٹائن دس از دی لیومن آف دی انٹسٹائن and from the innermost part to the outermost part there are several layers of the intestine and the innermost layer is called as the mucosa whereas the outermost layer is called as the serosa and between this mucosa and the serosa layer is the submucosa and the muscular layer if we try to magnify this particular portion of the intestine you will see that the mucosa consists of small cells on it which are called as epithelial cells and these are also called as enterocytes there are finger like projections and these finger like projections are called as villi uh, this mucosal layer rests on a muscular layer which is termed as muscularis mucosae 
After the mucosa layer, there is the layer which is called as submucosa, and it contains several glands which are called as submucosal glands. And here, in this particular picture, it is not shown. The submucosal plexus is not shown, but there should there are also nerve plexus within the submucosal layer. Uh, th these plexus are called as submucosal plexus or Meissner's plexus. Uh, then starts the muscular layer. The inner layer is the circular layer of smooth muscles and the outer layer is the longitudinal layer of smooth muscles and between this longitudinal layer of muscles and the circular layer of muscles the inner and the outer muscular layer there is a plexus which is called as myenteric plexus or orbux nerve plexus the outermost layer of the intestine is called as serosal layer it is important to memorize these layers because there are several stru critical structures whose functions we are going to study later on. Uh, the, the, all the components of the intestinal wall serve important functions. The innermost layer, the mucosal layer, uh, is composed of epithelium and the lamina propria. Mm, the epithelium of small intestine contains several important cells which are absorptive goblet and endocrine cells. Uh, there are also undifferentiated cells in the intestine uh, from which the other cell types like the absorptive goblet and endocrine cells can arise. Uh, these cells rest on the basal lamina and they cover the lamina propria. The lamina propria also consists of nerve fibers. Uh, smooth muscles which are also called as myofibroblasts, capillaries and immune cells. The immune cells also include lymphocytes, phagocytes and mast cells. Uh, directly beneath the lamina propria uh, there is an other uh, muscular layer on which, which which serves as the outer bound of the mucosa and it is called as muscularis mucosi. Uh, directly beneath the uh, lamina propria uh, whose outer boundary rests on muscularis mucosa uh, there is another layer which is called as submucosa this submucosa uh, has cell bodies nerve cell bodies in ganglia of the submucosal plexus and b below the submucosa is an inner circular layer and there is an outer longitudinal layer with uh, these layers are made up of smooth muscles and between these smooth muscles the inner circular and outer uh, longitudinal uh, there is a plexus which is called as myenteric plexus and uh, the other name of the myenteric plexus is orbax plexus uh, finally uh, there is the outermost layer which is called as serosa uh, which is the outermost lining of the gut wall so now we are going to talk about another important learning outcome of this particular se section the neural control of the gut function and if we see uh, the enteric nervous system it is a very delicate system which comprises of sympathetic division the parasympathetic division these two are part of the autonomic nervous system and the neural control of gut function is mediated by sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system and also in addition to these branches of the autonomic nervous system there is an inherent uh, system of neurons located in the uh, myenteric and submucosal plexus which we have already discussed now we are going to discuss the the implications and different processes how they are integrated with with the autonomic nervous system so the the uh, please do remember submucosal plexus is also called as uh, meissner's plexus and myenteric plexus is also called as orbax plexus this meissner's plexus is present in the submucosal layer of the intestine and the myenteric plexus is present between the inner circular layer smooth muscles and outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscles the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system they they 
they they contain both motor and sensory components in the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system they the both different and efferent division and the sympathetic division is innervated by the splanctic nerve and the parasympathetic division is innervated by the vagal and sacral nerves both have sensory and motor component uh, you can also get afferent or efferent divisions as we previously discussed in veterinary physiology one when we were discussing the nervous system the sympathetic innervations of gastrointestinal tract uh, uh, is actually the preganglionic efferent neurons leaving the spinal cord that synapses in the sympathetic ganglia outside the gut and transmission at the synapse is mediated by acetylcholine in continuation with previous slide this is a one dimensional uh, picture of the intestinal layers uh, you can see that there is this mucosal layer this is the mucous membrane and th from on this side there would be lumen after this mucous layer there is muscularis mucosi then there is submucosal layer and this is the submucosal plexus afterwards there is this circular layer this is the inner circular layer and there is bit there is this outer longitudinal layer and between this inner circular and outer longitudinal layer uh, my enteric plexus has been shown uh, afterwards there is this serosa layer and outside the the the, uh, the wall of the gastrointestinal tract there is also a ganglia which is uh, in this scenario is called as prevertebral ganglia so in this particular picture i just want to mention that uh, the sympathetic system the preganglion sympathetic efferent neurons are leaving the spinal cord and they are going to the prevertebral ganglia uh, the the neurotransmitter between this sympathetic preganglionic fibers and the prevertebral ganglia is predominantly acetylcholine uh, and it is acting at nicotinic cholinergic receptors then there is the post ganglionic afferent sympathetic fibers innervating gastrointestinal tract and they contain norepinephrine acting at their adrenergic receptors uh, some post ganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers also contain somatostatin or neuropeptide y which act on their specific receptors so as discussed previously this is the preganglionic sympathetic efferent nerve fiber and this is the postganglionic efferent fiber of the sympathetic nervous system uh, mind you these are the effector regions of the sympathetic nervous system they are going to take information uh, from the spinal cord to the prevertebral ganglia and to the myenteric and meesner's plexus to intestinal tract uh, so the sympathetic sensory or the afferent neuron receives information from the gastrointestinal tract and uh, this this afferent neuron receiving information from the bowel has its cell body in the dorsal root ganglion and its synapses in the spinal cord therefore information from the gut can be carried to the higher centers or enter a simple reflex pathway back to the bowel from the cord through the prevertebral ganglia so here you can see that uh, this is the gastrointestinal tract lumen and there could be food and 
there is an environment the gastrointestinal tract might be over here uh, so the information can be received by the intestinal epithelium and it can go directly uh, via this sympathetic afferent nerve fiber into the spinal cord and this is mind you the afferent fiber of the sympathetic nervous system uh, the information can also go from the intestinal epithelium into the submucosal plexus and the uh, a simple reflex pathway would be enough to get a response from the epithelium through the motor division so the entire nervous system can work independent of the sympathetic nervous system it can work uh, solely at its own expense and it can also uh, take information to the higher brain center so the information is collated between the autonomic nervous system and the enteric nervous system enteric nervous system the mesners and the myenteric plexus can work independently of the sympathetic uh, nervous system which is a branch of autonomic nervous system and uh, carry out simple reflex pathways and thereby uh, small segmented reflexes can be generated in which food passes food moves forward so like the sympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic efferent nerves they actually originate in the vagal nucleus of the medulla that is in the brain and these efferent nerves of the parasympathetic nervous system they project into the gut where they make nicotinic cholinergic synapses with the ganglion cells of the submucosal and myenteric plexus uh, uh, the acetylcholine is the major neurotransmitter at these synapses the parasympathetic postganglionic cholinergic fibers will innervate the muscle or epithelium release acetylcholine at these muscarinic cholinergic receptors so this is the diagrammatic view of the parasympathetic nervous system and you can see that the parasympathetic efferent fibers that have originated in the vagal nucleus of the medulla they are projecting into the gut and uh, they are synapsing with the nicotinic cholinergic receptors in the mucosal and the myenteric plexus this is the submucosal plexus and this is the myenteric plexus so these parasympathetic efferent fibers are actually synapsing at the myenteric and the submucosal plexus the parasympathetic postganglionic cholinergic fiber uh, which innervates the muscle or epithelium releases acetylcholine over here and then we have the parasympathetic efferent fiber the sensory fiber which is sensing uh, food in the gastrointestinal tract and carrying out necessary sensory perception to the to the central nervous system the spinal cord or the higher centers like the brain so this takes us to another question that the the how are the different enteric neurons their cell bodies they are connected to the a sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system so the cell bodies of the enteric neurons do not simply act as a relay station for the preganglionic cholinergic impulses uh, like for example if you see there are only about 10 raised to power 8 neurons in the enteric nervous system but only 2 into 10 raised to power 3 vagal efferent fibers so the vagal command fiber may contact only key neurons in the circuit of the neurons composed of motor and sensory neurons or the interneurons of the ENS and, th and the rest 10 raised to power 8 neurons in the ENS are well connected with each other through the interneurons so now the question arises that can enteric nervous system work independent of the central nervous system because it is connected with uh, uh, the, the all the neurons in the enteric nervous system are connected by interneurons so many interneurons may be interposed between the vagal and preganglionic fiber and the enteric neurons and they directly innervate the smooth muscle epithelium so this 
final neuron need not be cholinergic but may contain substances such as vasoactive intestinal peptide or gastrin re releasing peptide. In fact, many neuronal circuits of the enteric nervous system can operate independently from the central nervous system. For example, the basic peristaltic reflex can take place with all central nervous connections severed. So, if there is no central nervous command over the the over the over the movements in the gut the basic peristaltic reflex can still go on because the enteric nervous system can work independent of the central nervous system and this illustrates that there are local enteric reflexes uh, that can direct fairly complex motility patterns the majority of the fibers uh, in the vagus are of afferent in nature and they carry sensory information from the gut to the vagal nucleus in the medulla thus it is possible to uh, get the vagal reflexes uh, modified by the higher centers in the brain but essentially it needs to be understood that the enteric nervous system can work independent of the central nervous system through its own pathways that occur between the submucosal myenteric plexus and the epithelium of the gastrointestinal tract so it is at the end of the lecture for the uh, understanding the layers of the intestinal wall and the enteric nervous system agar aapke koi sawalat hai to aap ne cr ko likh sakte hain aur wo cr jo hai aapke sare sawalat ko compile karke wo file mujhe bhej sakta hai powerpoint jo hai wo maine cts pe already upload kar di hai आपके सी आर ने कहा है कि ये फाइल जो है उसका साइज़ थोड़ा बड़ा है तो आई एम ट्राइंग टू कीप इट शॉर्ट आई एम ऑल्सो ट्राइंग के इसका साइज़ थोड़ा छोटा किया जा सके ताकि आपको ईजीली आप इसको डाउनलोड कर सके तो अगर कोई क्वेश्चन हो तो आप लाजमी मुझे ई मेल भी कर सकते हैं लेकिन बेहतर है कि अपने सी आर को भेजें और वो कंपाइल करके फाइल मुझे भेज दें स्टे सेफ और स्टे ब्लेस्ड